In July 2018, the Carnegie Institution for Science announced the discovery of 12 new moons orbiting Jupiter. So far, only one, S2016J2, has been given a preliminary name, Valetudo, a Roman god of medicine whose Greek equivalent is Hygieia. Now this raises the question, what do we call the other new moons of Jupiter? To answer this, we need to turn to the International Astronomical Union, aka the IAU, who have set of guidelines for naming Jovian moons. The golden rule essentially says, all moons of Jupiter have to be named after lovers or descendants of Jupiter or Zeus. Currently, 52 of Jupiter's moons have been given names, all of which meet this criteria. But surely they're going to run out of names, I hear you say. Well, it turns out that Zeus, and to an extent Jupiter, were very friendly and persuasive gods, who had many, many, many lovers and descendants, meaning there are plenty of names to choose from. Now, the IAU have additional guidelines for naming the outer moons of Jupiter. 1. Moons with a prograde orbit must have a name that ends with the letter A, and moons with a retrograde orbit must have a name that ends in the letter E. Side note, in unusual cases, prograde moons can have a name that ends in the letter O. This is why the oddball moon of Valetudo was given its name. Now, the final rule, while not stated on the IAU's website, is just good nomenclature practice. Do not pick a name that has already been assigned to another moon, asteroid, or celestial body in the solar system. So, taking these guidelines, we can narrow down the many, many, many lovers and or descendants to find which names match the IAU's criteria. So out of the 12 new moons discovered, three are prograde, one of which has already been given a name, Valetudo. The other two moons belong to an existing orbital group called the Himalaya Group. While there are 22 potential names for just two new additions, these candidates can be narrowed down further, as there appears to be a theme running through the names of the current members of the Himalaya Group. Leda, Himalaya, Lysithia, Ilara, and Dyer are all consorts of Zeus, some of which have insane stories associated with them, such as Leda, who was seduced by Zeus, disguised as a swan, and then laid an egg containing their children. So it would only be fitting to continue this trend and name the two new moons of the Himalaya group after lovers of Zeus. Candidate 1, Aegir, the wife of Pan, half man, half goat, who bore a son with Zeus called Aegir Pan. But this is according to Heiger's fables, and other writers at the time say that Aegir was the daughter of the king of Crete, who became the nurse for Zeus when he was an infant. And others say she was a goat. Either way, she's heavily associated with Zeus. Up next, Anaxathea, a mortal who was one of the 50 daughters of Danaus, a mythical king of Egypt. She and Zeus had a child called Alenus, which is also the name of a Greek city. Option 3, Idea. Now she was a naiad, which is a water nymph, where in Greek mythology, a nymph is a female spirit of the natural world. She had a son with Zeus called Kres, who may be the inspiration for naming the Greek island of Crete. Now there is also Thyre, a mortal who was a princess of Thessalia, and she had two sons with Zeus called Magnes and Makednos, not to be confused with the Pokemon Magmar and Metagross. And finally, Torhebia, a mortal who had a son with Zeus called Carius. A quick mention should also be given to Cassiopeia, Queen of Ethiopia, wife of King Cepheus, and mortal lover of Zeus. However, since there is a wonderful constellation named after her, I don't think Cassiopeia should have a Jovian moon named after her as well. Out of the five candidates, I think Aegir aptly fits the theme of lovers with crazy stories, and I personally would love to see a moon called Torhebia, because it's such a cool sounding name for a Jovian moon. So, with the prograde moons taken care of, that leaves the retrograde moons to name. These nine moons belong to existing orbital groups called the Kame, Ananke, and Pasiphae groups. Looking at the existing members, there appears to be no clear group theme amongst the names of the moons within them. Therefore, I'm simply going to talk about the potential names for the nine new moons and occasionally make suggestions for the group they could belong to. So let's jump right in with the first lover or descendant of Zeus, or Jupiter, whose name ends in E being... Alcippe, grandchild of Zeus, whose parents were Ares, god of war and son of Zeus, and a princess of Athena called Aglolas, who is in no way associated with Legolas. Next, Melanoe, daughter of Zeus and Persephone. She is an underworld goddess who wandered the earth with her train of ghosts. One half of Melanoe was black and the other white to reflect her horrific yet heavenly nature. Now this one's a bit of a curveball, but hear me out here. Lighty is the collective name for the lame, wrinkled, nameless daughters of Zeus who followed Arte, the goddess of ruin and mischief who was also the daughter of Zeus. Now this is a viable candidate for the name of a moon, after all, Saturn's moon Titan is named after an entire generation of gods, so Lighty should definitely count. Another candidate is Milie, daughter of Zeus and Chaldeni. Now Chaldeni is already the name of a moon in the Kame group, so it only seems fitting that Milie is put in the same group as her mother. 
Fun fact, Zeus and Chaldeney had another child called Solomus, who went on to marry his own sister, Milie. Hmm... Perhaps the most typical Greek god suggestion so far? Telite, granddaughter of Zeus and daughter of Dionysus, god of wine and ecstasy. Telite was the spirit for certain, um, parties thrown in honor of her father. Oro, Oreo, Ororo? Oro is the name of one of the many nymphs that caught the attention of Zeus. In this case, Oro was a naiad, a water nymph who was the spirit of the springs for a Greek town called Plataea. Up next, Herophile, daughter of Zeus and Lamia. Now, Herophile was a Delphic sibyl, a woman from before the Trojan Wars who recorded stories at the time, and she was a fairly sensible person, but her mother, Lamia, was a child-devouring sea monster. Hmm. Now, this really stretches the definition of descendants, but here goes. Meet Polyphonte, great-grandchild of Zeus. Polyphonte is still quite interesting, though, as she coupled with a bear and had two sons, Agrios and Oreos, who were not just bears, but giant bears, and spent their free time terrorising ancient Greece. Next is a package suggestion, Euphemy and Philophrocene, granddaughters of Zeus and the goddesses of praise and welcome. They had two sisters, Euclea and Euthedia, and all four of them were collectively known as the Younger Charities. Personally, I think if Euphema and Philophrocene were chosen, it would make sense to give them to moons belonging to the same orbital group. Ideally, this would be the Pasiphae group, as it only has two of the newly discovered moons within it. And finally, the last two suggestions are Melanipe, daughter of Ares and therefore grandchild of Zeus, and Iodemy, a mortal lover of Zeus, who was a priestess at the Temple of Athena. Since I couldn't find any depictions of them online, please accept this family tree and a picture of a Greek cat as a substitute. So here are 12 suggestions for what we can call the 9 new retrograde moons of Jupiter. However, that leaves 16 other Jovian moons that have yet to be named, while 8 of these have been lost. The other 8 have been waiting for names for almost 10 years. All of these moons are outer moons and also retrograde, meaning their names have to end in the letter E. But there simply may not be enough names to meet the criteria set out by the IAU. So what happens when they run out of names? Well, there's plenty of lovers and descendants whose names end in the letter S. So that might be the next go-to letter for the IAU. In the meantime, out of the names I've suggested for the latest moons, please let me know which ones you like the best in the comments. Or, if I've left out a viable Greek or Roman candidate that would be a great name for a moon, please let me know in the comments and I'll add it to the description below this video. The discoverer of these new moons, Scott S. Shepard, has suggested the public could have a say in what they could be called. This means if you contribute to the discussion below, you could actually have a say in what to call a moon of Jupiter. By the way, I've checked, and Moony McMoonface is a hard no from the IAU. Sorry.